be too late for some of you, but for those of you who haven't, do not go and watch this movie. Deadpool and Wolverine have just made over one billion dollars and have broke many different records in the movie world. Why? Because the evil one saw something he liked in that movie and pushed it out to the masses. So what could be so bad that people would walk out after the first 20 minutes and many Christians are now saying they will forever boycott the Marvel movies? This is what was so bad. I am Marvel Jesus. And then notice this, that big hill of skulls is no accident. Jesus Christ, the location where he died on the cross was called Golgotha, and that can be translated to mean the place of the skull. My dear friend, wake up. There is an agenda against the Son of God, and you need to know that Marvel Jesus will not save you. The only Jesus who will save you is the true Son of God who died on that cross for you. In a million years time, Wolverine Marvel will be forgotten, but Jesus Christ will still be sitting on the throne, and that is why you should take sides with him and not some silly little comic book. If you agree with this message and you want to hear more about Jesus when you open this app, please do subscribe. But I hear what you say, Christians can't even take a joke. It's not even meant to be Jesus. It's just an X like X-Men and it was taken from a very old comic book series many, many years ago. That's where they got the idea from. Okay then, I'll play ball with you for now. If it's not meant to be against Jesus, why didn't he say Marvel Buddha? or Marvel Gandhi, or any other religious figure. Why is it always Jesus? Answer that question for me. Now, on a more positive note, you won't believe me, but I actually met Deadpool back in 2020. Now, just before I show you the footage of me debating with him and sharing the gospel with him, first, let's listen to how other people reacted to that very irreverent Wolverine scene. We wrote this sort of Marvel Jesus uh, bit in the movie, which is really just more of a, a way to illustrate Deadpool's own self-delusion. We went to see Deadpool and we left um, probably about 25-30 minutes into it. Just so against the Lord. I Like the first 10 minutes and my husband's like, Serena, just wait. Just wait till they get to the well, when Wolverine gets in the movie. It'll get better. It didn't. It didn't. I didn't even, I didn't even watch the whole thing. I had to stop watching it. For him, the amount of times he called himself uh, Jesus or, or, you know, God or made like a biblical type of joke, um, it just wasn't really funny. You know what I mean? Like a lot of the jokes, I think probably like, I probably heard maybe the crowd laughing at me once or twice at some of those jokes. It was more disrespectful than I thought it was going to be. Deadpool says, I am Marvel Jesus. I am the Messiah. He, he keeps repeating it. He doesn't just say it once. He makes it clear and they even put it in the trailer. That's how in your face they put it and how easily they can get away with it. So, over to you. What do you think? Do you think these people are just overreacting? Do you think it will come to the point where Christians will literally have to boycott absolutely everything? Well, maybe. And I'll tell you why. This world, very quickly, has moved further and further away from this book. It's moved further and further away from the scriptures. And while this world continues to distance itself from the God who created them, well, there might come a point when you and I as Christians have to distance ourselves from the world. And that might mean no more movies, no more Netflix, even no more social media if they block out the Christian voice, which could eventually happen to us all one day. Oh, my dear friends, what is the heart of the matter? The heart of the matter is these people are breaking the third commandment. The world right now loves to break the third commandment. What is the third commandment? Exodus 20 verse 7 says, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. What does that mean? It means these people who love to laugh at the Lord Jesus Christ, these people who love to drag his name through the dirt, the Lord God will not hold that man, that woman, that director guiltless. Why? Because the Lord will have honour for his name. And I'm telling you right now, we as Christians should be seeking the honour of the Lord God above everything else, above our entertainment, above our, our relaxation time. Everything should go beneath that and the Lord's name must be honoured. 
Do you agree with that? Do you want to see the Lord's name honoured? I'm ashamed to admit this, but many years ago, before I knew Christ, I took the Lord's name in vain. I would say, OMG. I would say, Jesus Christ, when I was surprised or upset. And my friends, that is a sin which the Lord God says, you are guilty. I wonder, is there someone watching this video right now who is currently misusing the name of the Lord? If that's you and you haven't already, come to the cross. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ, the real cross of Christ, and ask for all of your sins to be dealt with and washed away. That's what Calvary was all about. And by the way, you know the name Calvary? That's actually the Latin word again for this word skull. It comes from Calva. And again, because Jesus died at the place of the skull. So see him there, dying in this ugly place, this place of the skull. Why? Because our sin, our wrongdoing, the times we took the name of the Lord in vain, it was so ugly. And so God had to pour out all of his wrath and all of our sin was dealt with there. So please, please, whoever you are, if you've not yet come to Calvary, let the Lord Jesus Christ wash away all of your sins, cleanse you and forgive you and give you a fresh start. Now, here's the part you've all been waiting for. Here is my rather interesting dialogue with Deadpool. Show them love. They will receive love. Yeah, so you're saying just, just preach the love of Jesus, okay? Yes. Yeah, okay, but uh, uh, don't tell them about their sin. But why, why, where is it that we see that God demonstrates his love for us? How do we see that? We see it through spreading his word of love, okay. not his word of anger. But why is... Once, once you talk about sins, it just gets the mindset of people about anger. When you talk about love, when you talk about heaven to them, they will love it way much more than hearing about hell. Yeah. Hell is fearful. Yeah. Heaven is beautiful. Yeah. And talking about hell will make people get towards heaven. Not really much. But if you talk about heaven, people will get unconsciously yeah. walk towards heaven. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree. I, I want to preach heaven. I want to preach the love of God more than the judgment. There is a hell. There is a very real hell and all of us are going. Yeah, but can I just say this, sir? You, what, what concerned me more than anything is when you said, don't mention sin. Now, the only way that we know that God loved us is because Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. Like, if that God is not going to see my good signs and stuff, then he's not a good God. Let me tell you this, it's not like scales, it's not about you've done so many good works and you've done that. God's standard is perfection, and you and I, we can never ever meet that, but this is the good news, and this is why I think you're smiling behind that mask there, DP. Here is the good, here is the good news. Jesus Christ on the cross bled and died for sinners. The worst of you was laid on Jesus Christ, and if you receive him, DP, the best of him can be given to you as a gift, so you can be clothed in the righteousness of God. And here's the good news, it's a one size that fits all, whether you're a big sinner or a little sinner, Jesus' righteousness can clothe you and make you seem perfect in God's eyes. So God doesn't see DP in the wrong things he's done, he sees the righteousness of God. And if you receive him, he promises to forgive you and anyone who hears this and wash you white and snow. DP, it's been great. Come here, give me a hug, man. Yeah, great to chat. Take care and I'll see you again. People, first think things, love yourself and give a plus to yourselves. Come on. Don't be so, don't be so down. Come on, love yourselves, man. Okay, yeah, yeah, love yourself. Yeah. And if you've got a spare bit of change, give it to oh, DP for his dancing, yeah. I'll, I'll be over there and I'll give you one penny. That's your, that's your way. I'm joking. By the way, if you would like to see more of my interesting interactions on the streets, click here. And if you haven't yet subscribed and you found this video helpful, please do subscribe. God bless you all and thank you for watching.